Well, here we are at once again at the Highland Ballroom in the lounge area, and we're here on the last day of the 2014 Atlanta Film Festival. And I'm here with a great, uh, the director of a great film from Iceland. The name of the film is Metalhead, and the name of the director is Ragnar Bragason. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about the film, about the, uh, the you know, synopsize it for our audience? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's uh, Metalhead takes place in the 80s and early 90s in Iceland. It's, uh, it's about a, a family who, who, who lose their son in a terrible accident on a farm. And uh, I mean, it's a story of, of that family, the, the parents and his younger sister, how they deal with that, you know, how they grieve and go to that process. And, and she kind of takes on his, you know, she dresses up in his leather jacket and starts listening to the music he listened to. Uh -huh. Almost takes on his personality. Yeah, basically. So she kind of live, starts to live for both of them, you know. But it's, I mean, it's a story about how we, you know, it's about forgiveness and how we kind of, you know, process that. Yeah, and how we how we use different ways to get over things and mm -hmm. to deal with things, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, you would when you go see a movie where it deals with the subject matter of heavy metal, uh, which is central to to the film, mm -hmm. you don't expect it to have this kind of emotional edge that uh, that. That this movie does, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, the movie is is hard edged and bleak at times, but it's also quite uh, quite uplifting. Yeah. Um, uh, how did you walk that sort of fine line between between having those two elements in your film? Well, well, usually when 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 the when heavy metal is incorporated into a film, it's either you know the kind of you know. You know, exaggerated elements of it, or kind of the extreme, or the comical aspects like Spinal Tap or stuff mm -hmm. like this. You know, but you know, I, I, I'm a metalhead myself. Kind of grew up listening to a lot of metal, and that was kind of my you know pastime hobby when I was growing up. Was kind of collecting albums and stuff. And I mean, I I kind of discovered the world through music. You know, the lyrics, and I mean, it's, I mean, the lyrics to heavy metal is kind of dealing with. Uh, more serious, you know, issues than kind of standard pop music. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you get, you know, you get history lessons, you know, get long songs by Iron Maiden about kind of the plight of the Indians yeah. or, or the Alexander the Great or whatever, you know. So you kind of, and, and it's dealing with kind of, I, I would say maybe the darker side of life, you know, death and kind of war and, you know, who we are and stuff. So I, I really wanted to kind of incorporate, do a story that it would, you know, be a more kind of a, you know, inter, you know, kind of a, a, a big part in kind of a, a dramatic kind of setting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I looked for that story for many years, you know. I, I had in the back of my head to do something with Mel, but it took me like five, you know, this is my fifth feature film, so it took a while. Mm. I love that moment in the film where she explains, where your main character explains what it is that attracts her to metal, and, and that that it doesn't sugarcoat the uh, it doesn't sugarcoat mm -hmm. the harsher side of yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, do you agree? I mean, obviously you agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I, spent, I mean, I started listening to metal music when I was like ten. I got my first Iron Maiden album when I was turning you know ten, turning eleven, mm -hmm. and that was kind of eye eye opener for me because. Up to that point, you know, the only music I was kind of, you know, exposed to was kind of standard pop music going on, you know. So that was, that was, uh, I, 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 and I think, of course, you know, heavy metal can be comical. It's dealing, some, sometimes it has kind of, you know, fantasy and short and sorcery and stuff like this, you know, which is fun also, it has, has that fun element to it. But at the core, it's kind of it's, it's an outsider kind of music, and it's dealing with more serious issues. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I used to have a friend uh, I've lost touch with him who taught me about metal in, in a lot of ways, and, and taught me that there's a ridiculous there's a really large variety of yeah. of metal out yeah. there. I yeah. mean, you know, when I tried to pigeonhole metal into one one small box, he would say, "No, that's not that's yeah. this that's not." It. No. So I mean, there's a but there's a huge uh, there's a huge following for uh, heavy metal in your part of the world. Isn't yeah, it? I, I mean, mean Scandinavia, and I mean I would say kind of all of Europe, uh, well at least kind of western part of Europe, like Germany, 
and no, no, not the Western, also kind of Eastern part. I mean, it's a, uh, I mean, metal has always thrived in Europe, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that you know the metal scene in Scandinavia, especially, has been you know quite you know prolific in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the all, all the darkness or. Uh, it's, I mean, it gets cold, and you know, it's. Uh, I mean, it can be a bit depressing. The lack of light, yeah, <laughs> could be, could yeah, be, yeah. yeah. And it's all. I, I don't know. It it has. Um, it has different meanings to different people. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about your actors in the film, who I think are all like right down the line, uh, terrific in it. But of course, there's your lead actress. Yeah. Uh, can you tell about how you came into contact with her? She's yeah. just terrific in it. Well, she's actually kind of the the reason you know that I came up with the story because I, uh, you know, I was I was teaching at the uh, drama school in, in Reykjavik, the city, the, the capital of Iceland, and I did was teaching kind of a workshop with her class, you know, <coughs> film workshop, and a film act acting for film, and. Uh, and she just struck me, you know, right from the bat as a, somebody that could do great in film, you know. She was quite young, you know, she hadn't done any kind of, didn't have any experience doing film or anything. So I got the image of that girl with the guitar, you know, and I, I thought to myself, okay, I'll, now I kind of, the story starts to form, you know, around that girl with the guitar, you know, in the countryside. It was winter, surrounded by cows, you know, the, all the kind of, the contrasting elements of a girl in, dressed in black with kind of a pointy guitar dressed kind of surrounded by kind of oval shaped cows you know that was kind of the first image that came to me mm -hmm. so little by little the story kind of formed or rather quickly so I called her up um, maybe a year or a year and a half later and I told her asked her if she played guitar and she didn't so I said you have maybe 12 months to kind of you know rehearse <laughs> because I'm actually writing the script and this is the story, and, and you know, you have to kind of prepare for it. Uh -huh. So she did, you know, she, she went to great lengths to kind of, uh, you know, get that thing right, to be able to play mm -hmm. guitar in front of a camera, you know, because, I mean, it's, it's uh, frustrating when you see kind of actors doing something that they have no sense of <laughs> what they're doing. It is. So it, it was really important. So, and she had to kind of play guitar and sing, which she hadn't done, you know, never in her life, you know. Mm -hmm. So she kind of, you know, she, she jumped in the deep, pool, deep end of the pool and kind of, you know, it was perfect. Uh, also, the actors playing the parents yeah. are, are amazing in it as well. But also the priest and, and the, uh, the, uh, the chubby guy yeah, who yeah. falls for her. I mean, they're, they're all so great. They're, uh, you know, I mean, is there a large pool of actors to choose from in Iceland? And, and, well, I wouldn't say that it was large. I mean, it's a fairly. I mean, it's a. The whole population is three hundred thousand people, so the percentage of actors isn't that high, you know. <laughs> but I mean, we have very good actors in Iceland, and uh, well, most of the actors in that film I had worked with them before. Mm -hmm. The parents uh, had worked with them, you know, in theater and film, and, and uh, so I got them involved quite early in the whole process. I usually kind of get actors involved very early. On the, in the early stages, mm -hmm. so I so we talk a lot about the char characters, and they come up with stuff that I kind of can incorporate into the kind of backstories and and the, all the small details. I work, uh, I have a you know kind of way of working, kind of very extensively with actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you you allow them to throw in their ideas yes. and so forth. Yeah. And it, it makes it makes the film jump with life. I yeah, think. Yeah. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of music that you use in the film too, and I wanted to because you you got stuff from Priest and from mm -hmm. from Iron Maiden and mm -hmm. and and also Icelandic bands and so forth, but mm -hmm. some very big names yeah. in the, on the soundtrack. Did you have to? I mean, what are the rights issues, and yeah. did you have to wrangle for that? Or? Yes, I mean it was. I mean, the producers thought I was a bit crazy when I, when I, you know, kind of submitted the list of music I wanted to use. Uh -huh. I mean, I brought it into the script, but, you know, and it was kind of big name bands, you know, and it's a low budget. Huge name bands. Well, it's a kind of a low budget Icelandic film. So, but I, I kind of, you know, um, we just, you know, sent the script out and just, you know, said we're doing a low budget Icelandic film. I mean, the... 
the, the kind of mar marketing or, or kind of exposure to that film is always limited just because it's Icelandic. So I think they kind of, you know, loosened up a little bit about kind of the amounts that they asked for right. the rights and stuff. But it was, uh, it, it took us like 12 or 14 months to clear those eight or nine songs that, 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 that we had, you know. Uh -huh. And it's a jungle out there in terms of music license. <laughs> I know, I mean, that can, that can yeah. really, like, if you don't clear it or anything, that can really kill yeah, any yeah. kind of release yeah, for your yeah. movie. Uh, of course, I mean, we had everything signed beforehand. And, and uh, I mean, also because I'm kind of incorporating the, that specific music, you know, because the lyrics are kind of speaking to something that's going on in the film or something like that. And they're actually, she's actually talking about, about the, it. I yeah. mean, you're actually yeah. calling yeah. these guys, you know, gods yeah. of rock and yeah. so yeah. forth. So, yeah. I mean, well, so, so it would be hard for them to find something to nitpick on yeah. and uh, be and, angry about. And I got, <laughs> the, 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 the amazing thing was that I got most of the music I wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. I, it was, you know, I, I was quite fortunate in that sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it works great in the movie. Uh, also, I want to ask you about, you know, filming on location as you do, you know, the difficulties in filming in, in those sort of challenging locations. I mean, as being Icelandic, I guess maybe you're used to that. Yeah. But, uh, but are there any, you know, were there any specific things that made it difficult to, or make it difficult to make yeah. movies? Though? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> The, the, the great, well, the great thing with Iceland is that you have very kind of varied locations, you know, and it's, it's, uh, I mean, we have, you know, you know, from kind of small towns to glaciers to black sands and sh shorelines and, I mean, cities and uh, so it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a luxury being an Icelandic filmmaker in that sense, you have that access to great, great landscapes, mm -hmm. which, I mean, American filmmakers come there, you know, every year to do kind of, you know, Noah and Oblivion and, you know, Game of Thrones and stuff like this, just because of the landscapes. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the only problem I had was the lack of snow. I mean, it was, uh, I wanted to have it really kind of icy and snowy the whole time. But what happened is that, you know, it, it didn't snow that winter, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere close to that location. Well, warning, you guys, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, that's a part of it. And, and I had to do a lot of kind of <laughs> snow work in post-production. Oh, it was, really? Uh, it was a lot of it, it's just CGI and compositing, you know, compositing snow and stuff. You know? Oh. It was, uh, that took a long time, kind of in post-production, but that was kind of the only major hassle I had uh -huh. during the filming was the lack of, of, of the white stuff. Can you, uh, can you talk to me, I, I want to have a little bit of a movie geeky thing here and, and say, you know, I want to know about some of your influences and some of your favorite films mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, you know, artists that have touched you in the past. Well, a lot of my work, you know, I, I would say kind of uh, metalheads, kind of the most kind of visual stuff I've done in that sense. I mean, it's it's, it's it has a lot of kind of visual elements to it. It's in scope. Yeah, so. and it has that has that. I mean, it has the landscape. So you know, you know, naturally, I mean, it doesn't have much dialogue. So it's kind of you know, it's more kind of a visual film in that sense. But my early work is more it's more character and, bit, and kind of dialogue based and more kind of you know, I would say kind of more like any indie type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, I was, I'm hugely influenced by like John Cassavetes and, and Mike Lee and all the guys that kind of, you know, use the talent of the actor more, you know, more than just, you know, having them, you know, memorize the line as a parrot, more kind of in, involve them in the process of making the film. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the, then of course, there are gods of cinema like Kubrick and, and Kurosawa, which I just adore, you know, which mm -hmm. I kind of my, the reason I became a filmmaker was just the exposure to the films of the old great masters, you know. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, personally, I believe that Mike Lee is the greatest living filmmaker. <laughs> then, then we uh, totally agree. I, 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 I totally agree. He's my, he's my kind of idol, you know, of all the living directors, he's my kind of, he's, he's the guy that, I mean, I base a lot of my kind of ways, you know, the methods I use of creating stuff on his methods, you know. Uh -huh. I've done uh, two feature films that were created, 
totally from scratch with the cast, you know, there was no written dialogue, it was just improvised, you know, and created over a long period of time and stuff. So he's kind of my, he's kind of, I, he's, I don't know the guy personally, but he's kind of my mentor in film. I've met him once, I've met him once up at the New York Film Festival for yeah. a little while, I mean, it was like, a, it was like meeting him uh, I mean, you know, it was. I mean, he's a he's a legend. <laughs> absolutely unbelievable, and yeah. uh, I met a couple of people here at the film festival who've actually studied under him. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me what the uh, what you shot the film on, and what you shot Metalhead on, mm -hmm. and um, and you know uh, some of the tech specs of it? I mean, I had great crew, and you know, all all the people I'm working with have you know. You know, Balti Soska stuff to the editor. She's done great stuff like, you know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And, you know, she did, you know, Celebration of the Danish Film Fest. And, and oh. so she's, a, she's a legend, you wow. know, she, and a good friend. And, and we worked before in the past, so she was the editor on the film. And, and uh, actually, her son was one of the producers. And my cinematographer is the guy who shot my first film, August Jacobson. He's a Kind of, you know, he, he kind of grew up in LA doing kind of a lot of music. You know, he was on tour with Guns N' Roses for two years and mm -hmm. stuff like this, you know. Kind of was their kind of filmmaker, kind of doing kind of the documentary stuff. And and uh, um, we shot it on Ari Alexa. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, I mean, we, even though we did it digitally, we really wanted to have that kind of, that feel of kind of this old school, Type of a, we didn't have want to have that digital look to it because it was kind of you know the, because of the kind of 80s and 90s you wanted to have kind of a you know kind of smoky feel to it. Mm -hmm. So we actually had a, a crew member which was the smoke machine. You know she had even had a name and she was working constantly. You know he was always filling every kind of room with kind of this mist of kind of you know to, because I really wanted to have that kind of feeling that. The family was kind of frozen in time, and the and the and, all, and the home was almost like a relic or something, something uh -huh. from the they past. They haven't moved you know. forward. Yeah. Wow. So there's, you know, they they have, you know, the the room of the sun is stays, you know, as yeah. it is, and and that's the process they go through to kind of, you know, be able to kind of, you know, go on. Percentage of the audience which aren't people that usually go to film festivals, mm -hmm. which are kind of the metalheads, you know, people that want to see the film because of that. Uh -huh. you know? So it's always interesting that to to kind of you know do do the Q and A's where that is also kind of a part of it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that they respond to the uh, I won't say the sentimental side, but the softer side of the film? Yeah, because and I, I think also because I mean it's a, di a little bit difficult uh, with this film just because of the title of it uh -huh. and kind of the image is that people. Like, no, so like, basically, like you said in the beginning, you have some kind of expectation that it will be kind of brutal or whatever, you know? Yeah. But I mean, it's a soft film in that sense. It's about kind of, you know, very delicate emotions, you know? Yeah. And I think people appreciate that, you uh -huh. know, because they go in and they expect something and then they get something else, you know? Yes. Which is hopefully more, more has more depth and, and, you know, more detail than they kind of expected. I always think that's better for any film to yeah. sort of undercut what any kind of expectation yeah. that uh, yeah. that people might have, that you might, you know, that your subject matter might uh, Yeah, I mean, I've, them. I've had so, I mean, I've had people crying in, in screenings and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's been a, it's been a great journey with the film. Well, it really deeply affected me. I, I loved it, and uh, and I don't consider myself a metal fan, but I was I was perfectly fine with it. So mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, and it really builds to a great uh, a great you know ending, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but we won't go into that. Just look for the film by Ragnar Bragason. His film is from Iceland, and it's called. Metalhead, and I think that concludes our time here at the Atlanta Film Festival for Movie Geeks United. I'm Dean Treadway, and we'll see you later.